like when I ask them to contrast, what, why is this different from the mainstream? The most consistent response was that they're treated as professionals in that, you know, nice. I, I remember, um, her name's not coming to me right now, but she used to do the theater stuff. She said she had come from a program that did theater for mainstream schools and then came in to, to your setting and uh, was blown away. Yeah. One, by the kids. Uh, but two, when she was later hired on, she came to you with a proposal for knife making. And <laughs> and she had prepared as if she was going to approach a mainstream principal, which meant, what are the safety protocols? What are the, you know, yeah. how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to do with that? And, and she said that your response was, what do you need? Right. You know. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, what's great about Village Home is that, you know, we have to, we try to eliminate all the barriers mm. for the teacher and for the kids so that they can engage authentically. And so we don't get in the way of what the teacher wants to do in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It was right for her to say, hey, I'm thinking about this thing with knives. Is that okay? <laughs> And, you know, there's special things we have to do with that, obviously, sure. from a safety perspective. But the idea that really we want the teachers to bring their ideas and their responses to what the kids want to do right. um, authentically into the space. So we don't put a lot of requirements on them and we trust them right. to like create a, a learning environment that's inspiring and fun. Right. Right. And, and, yeah. and, you know, you were going to have to deal with the safety protocols in any case. So the right. fact that she shows up prepared is like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> you know? like, exactly. But you're not second guessing them either. You're sort of saying, I trust you as a professional. And when you give me a professional proposal, <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, how do I support that? Exactly. Well, actually we build our whole schedule from teacher proposals. Oh, okay. So we, we don't say, oh gosh, you know, we, we want to do a class about the Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. We let the teachers tell us what they're interested in, you know, facilitating for the kids. And so that's why the schedule changes so much from year to year, because it really reflects what the, what the teachers are interested in teaching. And we intersect that with what does the community want? Right. And then we find those common junctures and, and build the schedule with them. Yeah. And, and teachers come in with these like amazing ideas that I, there's no way I could ever, or anybody, any one individual would think of them. They're so diverse and, and exciting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's a, it's a constantly moving thing in our community, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Burr.